Okay, so we have this structure. We call the structure whole name and it consisted of three bits of information, right? First name, last name, and middle name. And then we have this operator here that's designed to allow the structure to be displayed using C out, right? So that we can print out that structure like that. And we've seen a way of allocating a variable from that structure, right? We give it the data type and then we give a variable name. But there's another way too, dynamic memory allocation. That looks like this. You have to declare a pointer to the structure, right? So whole name, RP, good enough. And then P is equal to new whole name like that, right? And then we can just fill it in like we were filling it in previously, except since it's a pointer, we have to use the pointer reference like that. So point P arrow or hyphen greater than first name is equal to Julia, right? And so on. We could create an array full of references like that, right? Full name star, you know, and we're gonna call this people. And we want room for three people in it. And so people subscript zero, the first element in the array is a new whole name. And people subscript zero, first name the Abe and we could allocate the second one right people subscript one <clears throat> is equal to new whole name people subscript one dash greater than first name equals Bob right and so on And whatever, I'm gonna make one more just by copying and pasting and changing the ones to twos, right? And it's gonna be Carol. Okay, so we have a data full of pointers now, pointers to elements of the structure. What about when we're done with that element? Since we dynamically allocated it, it would be a good idea to release that memory when we were done. So if we go up and Google C++, new and delete, we will see that along with the new keyword, there is the delete keyword. And you do that to prevent memory leaks. leaks. Now in a program this small, we're not gonna really have memory leaks that are of any import, right? You know, we've allocated three objects and we didn't delete them, big deal. What's a memory leak? A memory leak is where as your program runs over time, it continually allocates more and more RAM without ever releasing it. But still, we wanna know how to do this. So we, since we have this loop here, why don't we step through it and delete each node in it? So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, and then we can do delete people subscript i, like that, right? That'll release that RAM that each one of these is occupying, right? This uses up memory, this releases it. And we don't even have it printing anything. And ooh, it threw an exception. What exception did it throw? I accidentally clicked past it, so I didn't get to see it. See if we can figure that out. Run it again. Click the stop. Read access violation. Where at? Oh, 
call stack. Line 75. Well, I wonder what I did wrong. How's about before we do that, I'm just going to delete that for now. We tried to delete the one object that I allocated, right? Because I did allocate one object and I'd like to be able to delete it. So let's see if we can delete that object without it crashing. Oh, and it's still blowing up. Okay, well, obviously I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to pause the recording and figure it out. Okay, that was real dumb, right? We have index numbers zero, one, and two, except I accidentally put three there. So I was writing past the end of the array, and that was just a typo. So if I restored my code back the way that it was, my little for loop to release it all, right? And instead of an index-based loop, I could use a for-range loop as long as I make the variable a reference. So for whole name ampersand value, what, whatever, right? Actually, I'm not sure this is going to work at all. I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work. Let's find out. Yeah, I'm seeing errors here. Well, for one thing, you don't need parentheses around a, va a delete call. A reference of type whole name cannot be initialized with, okay, so that's not cool. What this needs to be is a pointer to the whole names, right? Maybe I'll just make it star P and then I can delete that pointer as we go through, right? Delete each one in turn. And then see out, done. Just so that we see some kind of message, right? All right, and so it's done. Okay, so what did we do here? Allocate an array with three pointers to whole name objects. And then here, what are we doing? We are allocating the objects and placing their references, well, their pointers in the array. How are we allocating the objects? With the new keyword, right? We're also modifying the data just a little bit to show that we can. I'm going to cut and paste these so that they're down here underneath the allocations. Now, did we have to allocate it like that? Did we have to allocate it as an array of pointers? No, we did not. We could have just created a straight array without having to do the, keyword, do the new keyword. And if we did that, then when we declared our array, we would leave the asterisk off. This is an array of pointers. And since they were pointers, we created them with the new keyword. If it was just an array of objects, it would look like this, whole name, I don't even know what to call it, crowd. It's a crowd of people, right? Three of them. Now we already have three objects. So if we want to change one of them, we want to change the last name of one of, of the first one, crowd subscript zero dot last name equals Williams and crowd subscript one dot last name, right? Whatever. Let's go to Johnson and crowd subscript two dot last name. Samson. 
How about these boring biblical sounding names? All right, there we go, right? So this is a little bit easier to do this. This is an array of whole name objects. So here we're creating them by their value. So we don't need to use new and we don't need to address them by pointer. All right, that's getting a little bit techy. So why don't we go ahead and get back into the PowerPoint. You cannot compare structures directly. We can't do if, well, I mean, we have these first names up here, right? We have these names that we were creating way up here, me and you. This won't work. I can't say if me equals equals you. And the reason why is this is just checking to what, see what their memory address is pointing at. And it's not even letting me do it. It's giving me a complaint here. So what we would have to do if we wanted to compare is to write some if statements like if me dot first name equals equals you dot first name and me dot middle name equals equals you dot middle name and you see what we're doing me last name equals equals you dot last name and if all that's true then we're the same right see how we are the same backslash in else see how we're not the same exclamation mark backslash in end quote semicolon Put some braces here just to make it look like the other one. Okay. So you see what I mean? In order to compare the objects from that data structure, we had to compare all the elements. Now we could attach a function to that data structure. By the time we're attaching functions to data structures, we're turning it into what's known as a class. And honestly, a class and a data structure in this language are the same thing except with one very important detail, and I'll show you what that is. If I change this to the word class because I feel like attaching some data structures to it, excuse me, some functions to it, all of a sudden we have a gazillion errors. And the reason why is that by default, all of the members of a class are private. And so if we wanted them to be public, we'd have to stick the word public here. When something is private, you can't change it down here in the code. So like if I made some private variable and I don't even know what I'm going to call it, um, like uh, prefix, you know, like pronoun, like people like calling them prefix, like Mr. and Ms. and stuff like that. So private, I'll probably delete this afterwards, but anyways, um, prefix, because it doesn't make any sense to have something we can't change, right? But now we have a variable here that cannot be changed from outside of the class, right? If I go down here and I try to change it, once I create me and I decide that I want to be called Mr. And so I try to set me dot prefix equal to Mr. It's not going to work because prefix is declared as a private variable. If I scroll back up to my object, I will see that it is private. So I can't get a hold of it. So a class has all of its members private by default, but you can override that with the public keyword. A structure, like we had, a struct, everything defaults to being public. And you can still have private members of a structure if you want. But people don't typically do that, right? Because then you'd have to write some kind of functions that would actually exist inside the structure. And like I said, conceptually, once you start adding functions to a structure, then you would think of it as being a class instead. So initializing a structure. When you create the structure, you can go ahead and fill in those fields if you want, or you can do it item by item like we were. So here's some student, and let's just demonstrate it in, in uh, ours. We're gonna create one more person. So we're gonna come down here and we're going to say, okay, I removed that prefix so that doesn't work anymore, right? After this business of the pointers, well, why not up at the top? 
full name, author. Let's look at the syntax for doing this. And we use the equal sign in the curly braces just like it was an array. And this, I don't know what Stephen King's middle name is. Let's go find out. Edwin, what do you know? Okay, so we're gonna give him a middle name of E. So Stephen, and let's give him a whole name, Edwin King. So since the values are defined as being three strings, first name, middle name, last name, up here in our object, if I scroll back up, right, my members, first name, middle name, last name. I don't need this public keyword anymore because it's still a structure. Then when we create it, the initializer will fill in that and fill in that and fill in that. Or you can fill them in by name, right? After we create the object, we set first name equal to one value, middle name to a second and last name to a third. Arrays of structures, we talk about this. You can put structures in an array. Here we have, and this is a very important point, you can use arrays of structures to replace parallel arrays. What do I mean by that? Remember when we had month days and we had rainfalls, we could create a structure that had a month name in it and then a rainfall amount in it or say that we wanted to correspond people's names and their ages, right? One way that we could have done that in the past was to have an array called ages, right? And let's declare a, a variable const int size equals three so that we could do that, right? And then names would be strings, right? String names of the same size. And then we could put some ages and names in there, right? So ages subscript zero, this person is 13 years old and their names, their name is Freddie. Next person, this person is, I don't know why I'm putting age in front of name. Normally we talk about the name followed by the age, right? This person is 21 and their names, their name is Marie. Apparently I forgot my S up here, there, right? And this person's age, age is subscript two, they're 18, fresh out of high school. And then names subscript to is equal to, and they're George, right? And so if we wanted to print these guys out, we could do so. We'd use a for loop, for int i is equal to zero, i less than size, semicolon i plus plus. And then we could see out the names at subscript i, followed by a space, followed by, well, here we are. How about this? Followed by quote, space, is, end quote, less than, less than, ages, subscript i, sub, arrow, arrow, quote, years old. Not years old, years old. Backslash n, end quote, semicolon, right? That'll print out our array. Let's get rid of this. Give ourselves some room. All right. And I'm going to put a system pause there just to make it stop at that point.
right? And so here we go. Fred is 13, Marie is 21, and George is 18. Well, that's one way to do it. That's parallel arrays. Parallel arrays are when you have two arrays of the same length whose data elements are linked by their subscript. But we could make a data structure that's got a name and an age. Right? So struct person data, right? And we're supposed to create these with an uppercase P. Alrighty, and they each person has a name, string name, and each person has an age, right? Int age. So now I'm gonna create an array of person data objects, right? So person data subscript three or size, right? We're gonna say it's the same size as the other one, so that means I need to move that variable up. And I forgot to give it a variable name. I can't think of a better name, so I'm just gonna call it data. I need to move this size declared, or I'm gonna cut that and paste it up here, right? And now I can stick three people in here, right? Data subscript zeros dot name is equal to Susan. Data subscript zero dot age is 53. Data subscript one dot name. So you go to Rebecca. Data subscript one dot age is equal to 47. And data subscript two dot name. So you go to Tracy. And data subscript two dot age is equal to 35, right? So now it's just one array rather than two, but each element in the array has two pieces of data in it. And then let's write a for loop that'll print it out. Let's use a for each loop this time. For person data v colon data, right? So for every person data in the file, excuse me, in the array, Let's see out that, that person's. Well, let's print out their, tell you what, let's do it with a normal loop. Int i is equal to zero, i is less than size, i plus plus, and we're gonna see out their name. So data subscript i, followed by quote is, end quote, less than, less than, then their age, data subscript i dot age, it looks like I forgot name over here, data subscript i dot name, right? And then end it all up with years old. All right, and so Susan is 53, Rebecca is 47, and Tracy is 35. Guess after all that, we should see out an end L, right? So that it'll look prettier. I'm gonna put a space here so it also looks prettier. There. Okay. Now I'm gonna get rid of that pause that I put down here, right? Where was that? right here okay so what is this section doing use parallel arrays to track the names and ages of three people that's what we're doing here and here we're going to use an array of objects to do the same thing use an array of person data objects to track the name and age of three people. Did I put in plural down here when I described it, names and ages? Yes, I did, so I'll do that here as well. Names and ages of three people.
previously, we had done this with parallel arrays. So that follows this example. Starting here, using parallel arrays. So to declare our structure, we see how to do it now. The struct keyword and we give it a name and inside the curly braces, we list our values, which we previously had decided to call structure members or instance variables. Why are they instance variables? Because they differ on an instance by instance basis. Remember that me.firstName was Jeff and you.firstName was John or whatever we had said it to, right? Yeah, like that. So one instance, of this data has these values, Jeff G. Thompson, and another instance of the data has these values. So they change on an instance by instance basis. Instance is just a word meaning one object. So me is an instance and you is an instance and author is an instance, right? And these are all instances of the whole name struct. Whereas here we have three instances, but they're put into an array. Each element in the array is an instance, and that's why each element can have a different name and age. That's why data, why element zero can be Susan 53, and element one can be Rebecca 47, and element two can be Tracy 35. Nested structures. I'm gonna stop here. Well, I mean, yes, a structure can contain another structure as a member, and that's very true. Here we've declared a structure called person info, and person info has got their name and their address in their city. And then a student has a student ID, and then they also have person info, right? So this is three pieces of data right there. And then we have a year in school, like this is my first, second, or third year in school, and we have a GPA. All right, we may give an example of that, but let's not do that now. All right, so I'm gonna stop here. And what do I want to give to y'all as homework? This will probably actually be the last homework of the semester. So for homework, I just want you to declare a structure that could be used to track information about books. What do books have in them? They have titles authors, they might have a page count, right? They might have editions, right? And publishers. I don't know what you want to put in there. Come up with stuff, be creative. Put at least four member data members in it in the struct now page count could be an int but most of this stuff is probably going to be strings so like an edition or a publisher or you know a year printed or whatever you know you can get some ideas just by going to google i mean to amazon and looking at the information that they have about each book Okay, so the struct has to have at least four data members. Once you've declared your struct, then in main, create two objects, two variables of that data type. What are we gonna call it? Name the struct book, right, with a capital me. So then in main, create two book variables and set their values appropriately, right? 
like author J.K. Rowling, and the book is Harry Body, Harry Potter, and the Cursed Remote Control, right? Whatever. So let's do that. Create two book variables and set their values. And then lastly, print the information out for those book variables. Now, I don't care if you get fancy and print it out like this, where we came up with this way up here. We came up with this. We did it like that. If you feel like doing it, that's fine. But you don't have to do that, right? There's lots of ways of cre of printing something. We could just make a, you know, print, going back for a whole name example, you know, void print name that takes a whole name object, const whole name ampersand in, and just does the same thing, right? Just doesn't need to print the word hello in front of it going to be the easiest function to write ever because I'm just copying and pasting and removing the hello function. Anyways, you see what it's doing, right? We have a print name function that prints our object and it prints the first name and the middle name and the last name. So instead yours was it would accept a book and print out the book's title and its author and you know stuff like that. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Alrighty, I'll see you next lecture.